For the next few problems, we are going to use Newton's second law in equilibrium. If you've already had the force table lab from last week or you're going to have it this week, you're going to get a lot of practice with equilibrium as well. So hopefully these problems will be a little bit easier. Objects that are either at rest or are moving with constant velocity are said to be in equilibrium. So if they're either at rest or moving with a constant velocity, that means their acceleration is zero. So if we apply Newton's second law to objects or systems that are in equilibrium, then the sum of all of the forces equaling its mass times acceleration, if the acceleration is zero, then the sum of all those forces must equal zero too. And forces are vectors, right? So they come in different, they come in all three dimensions, but in this class, we'll just stick to two dimensions. So we have to solve Newton's second law in both the X component and the Y component, solving Newton's second law in both the horizontal and the vertical in order to solve these problems for objects that are in equilibrium. And we've got a couple examples of those, those types of problems right here. This is an equilibrium problem. If you've already done the force table equilibrium lab, then this problem will be a little bit easier for you. Here we have a traffic light weighing 100 newtons. It hangs from a vertical cable here tied to two other cables that are fastened to a support above. So this is my support here. The upper cables make an angle of 37 degrees and 53 degrees with respect to the horizontal. We want to find the tension in the cables here that are attached to the support above. So we want to find the tension in this cable, the tension in this cable, and in the process we're also going to find the tension in this cable too. Okay, so we, we know the weight, we know these two angles, and we're looking to solve for T1, T2, and T3. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is draw the, we essentially have the free body diagram here anyway, but let me draw the free body diagram here for our stoplight. Okay, so if I draw the free body diagram for the stoplight, the stoplight has two forces acting on it. It's got its weight acting down, that's equal to our 100 newtons, and it's got tension, I'm calling that T3, pulling upward on it, okay? Now, if I draw the free body diagram of this, um, of coming from the center of this knot here, where all three of my cables are connected together, then the free body diagram, we'll just start it from here, the free body diagram will have T3 tugging down on it from this cable right here. Um, T3 is going to be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction to the tension that was pulling up here on my um, stoplight, okay? And here at my stoplight, if I do the sum of forces in the y direction equals mass times acceleration in the y direction, well, we're not accelerating in the y direction at all because this um, whole system is stationary, so that is equal to zero, then I'll have that T3 minus the weight of my stoplight is equal to zero. So this tells me that T3 is equal to the weight of my, um, is equal to the weight of my stop, stoplight, okay. So if T3, the magnitude of T3 is equal to the weight of my stoplight, that means that the magnitude of what I'm calling T3 here too, which is pulling down, the, the weight of the stoplight's pulling down here, then the magnitude of this force right here is also equal to the weight of my stoplight sign, and that's 100 newtons, okay? And then if I think about my other two forces, these are tension forces coming from this cable, I've got the tension force coming from this cable right here, we'll call this T1, okay? And I've got the tension force coming from this cable right here, and I'm gonna call that T2, 
Okay, so we've got T1 here, T2, and T3. So if I'm thinking about the free body diagram, essentially from this point where all those forces are pulling outward from each other, I've got T3 here, T2, or sorry, T2, and T1, okay? Now, before we can continue, I wanna talk about one thing here. We know these angles up here, this angle is 53 degrees, this angle is 37 degrees. To make this problem a little bit simpler, what I'm gonna do is um, use this angle down here to solve the problem and this angle right here, okay? So what are these angles? So what we have here is a parallel line. We've got our support up here. I drew in this pink dotted line, which is also a parallel line right here. And so here, this, essentially think about this line here, okay? This line right here dissects or intersects both of those parallel lines. And from geometry, these are alternating interior angles. From geometry, alternating interior angles are congruent, which means that they're the same. So this angle down here is also 53 degrees. This angle over here is also gonna be 37 degrees. Okay, so now with that information, we can continue on with the problem. We wanna find what is the tension on force one, or what is the tension from cable one, what is the tension from cable two, and then what is the tension from cable three. We already talked about what the tension for cable three is. That's the 100 Newton weight of our stoplight here. Okay, so then we've just gotta get um, T1 and T2. So how can we do that? <laughs> we can do that by appealing to Newton's second law, okay? And we're gonna solve Newton's second law in both the x and the y direction. This system is in equilibrium, which means that the sum of all the forces added together must equal zero. If you're in equilibrium, nothing is accelerating. So the sum of all my forces are going to equal zero. Okay, so <laughs> we can think about then the sum, or Newton's second law, in the x direction, which is the sum of all the forces in the x direction, equals to our mass acceleration in the x direction. And then, for the y component, we've got the sum of all the forces in the y direction equals the mass times acceleration in the y direction. We already said we're not accelerating, we're in equilibrium, so this is zero. So then we're going to have, here for the sum of all my forces, I'm going to have T1x plus T2x plus T3x must equal zero, okay? And then I have over here T1y plus T2y plus T3y must equal zero, okay? So I'm gonna set up a little table here that helps us organize all of the tension components in the x and the y direction. Okay, so if I think about T3, T3 is this tension pulling down here, which is equal to the weight of my stop sign. So T3 only has a y component and not an x component. So T3's x component will be zero. Its y component is gonna be negative 100 newtons. Now to find the x and the y components of T1 and T2, we get to use trigonometry. And in order to do that, let's think about over here. Um, let's just work on T1, okay? So T1, let me can draw this a little bit thicker here. We've got T1, okay? So T1, has an x component here, t1x, has a y component here, t1y, okay. So if we think about the x component here of our first tension, this side here is adjacent to our angle. I'm gonna call this angle theta one. Okay, so if it's adjacent, then we're gonna use cosine in order to find this component. So um, we will say that the cosine 
of theta 1 is equal to the adjacent side, T1x, over the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of T1, okay? So T1x is equal to the magnitude of T1 cosine theta 1. So then that tells us that T1y then has to be the magnitude of T1 sine theta 1. Okay, so over here, I'm going to say, oh, and I forgot that we got to think about the positive and negative components of this tension. We've got the y component that's upward, so that's positive. But we've got the x component, which is to the left, so that will be a negative component. So I need to put a minus sign on there. So when I write it over here, for the x and y components of T1, I'm going to say that T1x, I'm just going to eliminate the bars around T1 to tell us that it's the magnitude. I'm just going to call that T, so T1x is T1 cosine theta 1, negative, okay, because we had to go to the left for this force. And then the y component is going to be t1 sine theta 1, okay? And then in a similar way, for t2, if I come over here and think about my second tension force, okay? It has a y component here, t2y, and it has an x component here, t2x. The x component is adjacent to my angle of 53 degrees, so that tells me that T2x is going to be T2 cosine theta 2, because this x component is adjacent to my angle 53 degrees, which I'm going to call theta 2, okay? And then T2y, since we use cosine for the x component, we'll use sine for the y component. All right, so now I've filled out my table that shows me the X and the Y components of tension one, tension two, and tension three. And for tension two, where we have a component that's in the positive X direction, a component that's in the positive Y direction, and so um, both of those signs on front of those components will be positive. Okay, now we can fill in our equations right here in order to get us to solve for T1 and T2. Okay. So, let's look at our x equation first. We have T1x, which we said here was minus T1 cosine theta 1 plus T2x, which was T2 cosine theta 2. There's no x component for T3, and that all equals 0. Okay, so I have that one equation. And then, over here for the y components of my forces. I have T1y is T1 sine theta 1. T2y is T2 sine theta 2. And T3 is, well, well minus 100 newtons. Let's stick with our variables. So will be minus mg, okay? And so this is going to be minus mg equals zero. Okay, so I've got two equations, again, two equations, two unknowns, T1 and T2. So what do we have to do? We have to solve one of these equations for one of the tensions, plug it into the other one, and then solve for the remaining one. Once we get that, then you could take that tension and stick it into one of the other equations to get the remaining tension. Okay, what does all that mean? First, let's just go for this equation right here. Let's solve this equation here for T2, tension 2. If I do that, I'm going to move this term to the other side of the equal sign, and then I get that T2 cosine theta 2 is equal to T1 cosine theta 1. If I divide both sides by cosine of theta 2, T2 is equal to T1 cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2. Okay? So then I can take that, that equation that I just came up with for T2 
and I can stick it in here in my equation for, um, for the sum of the forces in the y direction. So I'm going to stick this in right here, okay? So then I have T1 sine theta 1 plus T2 was T1 cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2 times sine theta 2 minus mg equals 0. Okay, we know the weight of our object. We know all of the angles. The only thing left in this equation we don't know is T1. Put on your algebra hats again because we're going to solve this equation for T1. So I'm going to move the weight over to the other side. And then, so I'm going to move the weight over to the other side. So let's just do that now. Add mg equals positive mg, okay, to the other side. And both of these terms here are multiplied by T1. So I can factor out a T1 from this side of the equation. So if I do that, T1 times, I've got a big parentheses sign here, sine theta 1 plus cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2 times sine theta 2 equals mg. Okay. To get T1 by itself, we have to divide both sides by this whole big thing right here. Divide both sides by this, so then T1 equals mg, the weight of our stoplight, over sine theta 1 plus cosine theta 1 over cosine theta 2 times sine theta 2. Okay, that's the equation for T1. We solve it algebraically because then we've got this handy equation we solved algebraically. You can come back through, plug any different mass, any different angles that you need, and then you'll still get the, the answer T1 right here. So we did all of that work, we solved it for a variable, so all we have to do was plug in the numbers at the very last step. If you started plugging in your numbers way over here and way up here, and started adding and subtracting, then you're gonna have to redo this problem all the time over and over and over again in order to get the magnitude or the value of T1 here. But if you solve it for your equation, then you're good to go, okay? So now we just plug in the quantities. So this is going to be equal to our mass times gravity of our stoplight. That was 100 newtons divided by, so theta 1, remember up here, we said theta 1 was 37 degrees. So sine of 37 degrees is... 0 0.602, and we're going to add it to, um, remember, so theta 1 was 37 degrees, theta 2 was um, 53 degrees. So if you're plugging in all the quantities correctly for the second term, you've got cosine of 37 over cosine of 53 times sine of 53. This second term right here becomes 1.06. So there's no units on just taking the sine of an angle or cosine of an angle. Okay. And then I've got 100 newtons divided by the bottom part here, and then the tension becomes 60.2 newtons, because tension is a force, it's force is unit of newtons, um, for the magnitude here of T1. Okay, so this magnitude of this force, T1, 60.2 newtons. 60.2 newtons. For T2, 
Well, we've already got our 60.2 newtons here. We've already got this handy equation we solved earlier for T2. So we plug in the quantities. So T2 is equal to T1, which was 60.2 newtons times cosine of theta 1, which was 37 degrees over cosine of theta 2, which was 53 degrees. And so then T2 is 80 newtons. All right. OK, so now we found the magnitude of um, the tension force in all three of those cables required for this system to be in equilibrium. So I know it looks like some crazy work that we did here, um, but let's see if we can sort of summarize what we did. So we drew the free body diagram. Okay, step one, free body diagram. Okay, and maybe even the step before that was identifying your knowns and unknowns, okay? We made this handy table here to help us organize our X and Y components for all three of the forces acting here in the problem. Okay, all three of the tensions. Then we came over here and we did our sum of forces in the x and y direction. And maybe step four here was doing a little bit of algebra. We solved them, uh, or we solved one of these equations for one of the unknowns, plugged it into the other equation, and then we finally got an equation for T1 algebraically, which then we can plug values in in order to get one of the tensions you get that value and you can plug it in to one of the other equations that we had for tension.